Torah TV. The world is thinking. We have an entire chapter devoted to uh, common misconceptions about cloning and biotechnology. So while it is called How to Defeat Your Own Clone, it's not just about cloning. It's also about genetic engineering, uh, viruses, genetically engineered food, that type of thing. Uh, so we have a whole chapter devoted to all these misconceptions that people tend to get a little bit wrong. And I'm just going to read one of the passages from that chapter. So this one's called Bioengineered Sharks. Smart as humans, evil as sharks. It seems like every time movie stars try to save or take over the world with bioengineering, it always ends in catastrophe. Take the film Deep Blue Sea, for example, in which a team of researchers genetically enlarges the brains of three Mako sharks in order to harvest a particular enzyme for use in an Alzheimer's treatment. Well, the new genius sharks don't take too kindly to having nuggets of their brains removed, so they outsmart and devour the scientists instead. But why did they have to become genius killer sharks? Why not a league of sophisticated gentleman sharks sipping highballs and discussing the Dow Jones Industrial Average? Well, for one, it doesn't make for very engaging cinema. For another, the scientists didn't use very much foresight. They could have just as easily created sharks with huge brains and no teeth. The consequences of our genetic tinkering are all in the details, folks. If we're concerned about the bio-enhanced creatures of the future, we don't need less engineering, just less stupid engineering. On that note, uh, my favorite misconception, clones are convenient organ farms. On the contrary, clones are both expensive and potentially dangerous when mistreated. While it's true that your clone would share your genetic code, thereby circumventing the problem of organ rejection, there are several pitfalls to consider. First, your clone is both craftier and more elusive than a heart or a lung. On the day of your surgery, a lung cannot hide. Your clone can and will. Plus, catastrophic multi-organ failure is rare, so you're probably only going to need one spare organ from your clone at a time. Keeping an entire clone around for your very occasional organ needs is not cost-effective. It's also more than a little repugnant. Those who are known as clone-killing organ filters do not win friends or influence people. Unless you keep your clone in a vegetative state, she is quite likely to oppose the whole organ donation idea. Can we keep our clones comatose over the course of a lifetime? Maybe. But consider the cost of renting a bed in a nursing home for the next half century. Even if money is no object, you're still looking at using an organ that's been wasting away on old linen for decades. In this light, taking your chances with the kidney you've got doesn't look so bad. Infant organs are going to be of no use to you, and for that, perhaps we can all be a little grateful. Are you willing to plan your every medical need two decades in advance? No, we thought not. Anyone who's seen the island, or parts the clonus horror, knows that it is virtually impossible to keep a clone ignorant for her entire lifetime. That's a feat that can only be accomplished by a steady diet of reality television. To sum up, cloning for organ embezzlement is one of those situations where you're better off not being a bastard. 